Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falk Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be Morrow vs. Hero. Here on Moondance, these two are the finalists for GSL 2022 Season 2. I'm not gonna tell you who won, but it was a pretty darn entertaining series. Top left, we've got ourselves Maru, the best Terran in all of the world, and especially Korea. Bottom right, we have Hero, the best Protoss player in the world at this point. He got to the GSL Finals, and that makes him the best Protoss player. All right, all right. So, Hero, Probe Scouting, Probe Harassing, very, very early, as Protoss is wont to do. Maru, not surprised, already pulled off an SCV to take care of this. And another SCV with full health, chasing the probe around, hoping to drill into its robotic skeleton and kill it and stop it from sending scouting information back to Ayer or Shakuris or, I don't know, whoever's commanding this army of Protoss. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, scouting the double gas early here is interesting. It's gonna go right into factory, isn't it? The double gas timing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is factory play. Reaper coming in. Yes, sure. Gas, some of that's for the Reaper, but some of it has gotta be for a pretty darn fast factory here. This is why the probe being here is really important stuff. We've got a Reaper name ready to go. We've got a second base on the way from Hero, so he knows. He's like, okay, there's double gas. I don't see any indication of an expansion attempting to come up here at all, and there's the fact. Okay, so Morrow's going for that factory. On the other side, Hero expanding. Gotta feel a little bit worried about this. This is smelling like a one base push from Maru. Is it? I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay, so Reaper comes out, gets a kill. Easiest kill he's ever gonna get in his entire life, but this Reaper's name is actually a she. It's Amber Heard, <laughs> who has been in the news recently over the last few months and weeks uh, kind of fallen off of the news recently here too but yeah you've probably heard amber Heard's name more than once or twice in social media posts and whatnot we're not going to get into, into it because i really do feel like a lot of the facts around the story are just not really facts at all anyway not going to get into it okay so reaper hops in sees an adept runs takes two shots but three to die and the third one did not connect. Nice. On the other side, it is a starport. So we're one, one, oh, no, never mind. There's a command center here. So not one, one, wanting it, but definitely going for, you know, Widow Mind drop opening into an expand. Morrow's not going to try to murder his economy too much to try to kill Hero here. Respects the Protoss far too much to do that, right? So working on Phoenix opening, which the Reaper's going to scout. Reaper catches a glimpse of what's building inside that star. Oh, he's just going to die. That's it. He knows he's going to die, and he does. Or she does, I guess. Amber Heard is dead now inside the Reaper suit. Unfortunately, rest in peace, Amber. Going for a starport because we recognized, well, it's a Phoenix out, but also very good against Oracles and pretty good against Void Raids, too. So getting a, uh, you know, a Viking out first and then maybe going for your medevac is not a bad idea. Also, Widow Mines in smart places to try to catch Phoenix that fly by or Oracles that fly by. Either, oh my gosh, really? Oh, it wasn't quite set yet. Oh, this one is. I mean, hurts it. Doesn't kill it. Will one-shot an Oracle, but not a Phoenix. And so the Phoenix takes a ton of damage, but doesn't want to fly around anymore because a couple Marines are enough to finish that off, especially with the Viking assisting them, as we mentioned previously. Third base, loving that. Here we're going for the fast third base back in the safe third base location. There's only one Vespin Geyser here and only six Mineral Patches as compared to the two Vespin Geysers and the eight mineral patches anywhere else you're gonna take a third base on this map i guess you could take it here but that'd be stupid that'd be funny actually if somebody oh a proxy hatch here Ooh, i kind of like that idea for a zerg player oh no he left the door open why oh hero's like is that a trap why did you leave that door open maro and just canceled the shade could have killed some scvs there absolutely could have killed some scvs i mean i don't think they would have made it out of there alive Probably, but they would have killed some SCVs and slowed down the economy of Maru for sure. A raven coming in for Maru. Interesting. Okay, tell you what. If you're watching this and you're a fan of my cheese compilation I post every month, someone do that. Someone try to throw down a proxy at their opponent's base back there. 
I want to see somebody pull it off. If somebody pulls it off, we'll put it in the cheese comp for next month. How about that? That sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. If you don't know what the cheese comp is, I'm not too surprised. It doesn't get a ton of views anymore. But it's just cheesy games that people send me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of cheese. And I cast them. I cast them every month. There's a actually an entire playlist dedicated to cheese if you're curious about that stuff. I have a lot of fun casting it. I think people have a lot of fun engaging with it too and trying to get their own cheese to work, you know, and show up on the cheese comp. It's not necessarily, it's not all cheese that works. Some of it, you know, fails as well. And in that way, I'm kind of trying to honor the, the when cheese fails thing that the, oh my gosh, I'm spacing on their name right now. But Maximus Black's in Nova War he used to do a few years ago. What is their, what is their channel? Oh, it's been too long. I'm getting old, man. I'm just forgetting stuff left and right here. I got their names, though. I guess that's what really matters. Ah, Marines chasing the adepts out. They do manage to snipe one of them down. That's okay. Look at what we saw earlier. Phoenix groups high. It's seven Phoenix and an adept. That's the army right now from Hero. What a madman. Is Morrow going for a timing attack? Let's see. Stim's on the way. Combat shield is on the way. And plus one attack is on the way. It really feels like he probably wants to move out when those upgrades are finished. Bring a Raven along, too, in case there's DTs we have to deal with. Maybe throw down an auto turret for support. But he's like, dude, you have a million Phoenix. So they kill the Raven. Oh, they try to kill the Raven. They kill the Phoenix, or the, the Viking, which is good. This Adept wanders into the main. Ends up getting zero kill. Oh, one kill. One, two SCVs down before she gets taken out. Nice. Yeah, third base here from Hero. Working on Colossus. Are we going Phoenix Colossus? Look. One of the reasons Heroes had so much success in an era when professional Protoss have not been able to get Premier Tournament wins to even make it to the finals of a GSL is because he does unorthodox stuff that Terrans and Zergs are like, what is this? He's doing unorthodox stuff, and this is Phoenix Colossus with Unimmortal. Sure, this is so bad. This is so bad, though. Okay, shield battery overcharge, good. Like, really good here, actually. It's going to be Marine and some Marauder Widowmine Raven stuff here for Maru. So he's like, look, one good weird strategy deserves another. Colossus trying to dart out here. Doesn't have extended Thermal Lance yet, nor is it almost done. It's not even 50% complete here, which is a problem. Is it being... It is not being Chrono Boost. It's over here. Maru's like, oh, I don't like it. He's got Colossus out. He's got a ton of Phoenix. Widowmine's in a very, very sneaky position. You know, in case the Phoenix Ball flies over here feeling like they're safe, ba ba ba, they're all dead. That could win the game, honestly. If every one of these Phoenix die because they fly over this Widow Mine trap, I th that might just be it. Because it's all of the army supply for Hero right now is Phoenix. He's got nine Phoenix, a Colossus, an Immortal, and four Zealots. And I guess four Sentries, too, which were pretty big in that last battle. I didn't really mention them at all. Yeah, double Colossus out. Stem Thermal Lance coming in. Are we chronoing that yet? No. We're not. But yeah, third base from Maru getting taken behind that one. He's got his 1-1-1 one, one, one here, right? He's got his plus one combat shield stim. Oh, and concussive shell. So 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. I mean, it's not really a one for combat shield and concussive shell, but you know what I mean. Yeah, just Colossus. Colossus all the live long day here. Like, you don't have a lot of Vikings. In fact, you have zero total Vikings. Your army is largely Marines. You know what's amazing against Marines are the Colossus. I was, I still remember a Minric Madness game that I cast on the channel uh, forever ago. It was like early Legacy of the Void, right? And this one player just went mass Marines against their enemy Protoss. And the enemy Protoss was like, I, I'll just make like six Colossus then. And all the Marines died. And the Terran was very upset, but learned an important lesson that Marines are really good, but they do have some pretty hard counters. And one of those things is... The Colossus. Super rangy, splash damage, high damage output. Yeah. You don't want to deal with those if you're a largely a marine style army. Ghost production being added on at nine minutes, though. That's nuts. Like, that's pretty crazy stuff there. I mean, that's fast ghost. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw a ghost at nine minutes in a game. It's probably Maru. Like, Maru's the best player in the world with ghosts. He makes ghosts look overpowered in a way that other Terrans just don't. They don't. Like, they're good with ghosts. They will use ghosts. But you never watch another Terran player and be like, man, ghosts need a nerf. But with Morrow, you're like, ghosts need a nerf. <laughs> but then it's just one player, so you recognize that's not fair. We should not nerf a single... Well, 
We've done it before. We nerfed the Reaper because of Byun for a while. Phoenix picking off a couple SCVs, not overstaying their welcome. I love the fourth base that Hero's got. Fourth base coming in from Maru, too. I mean, we're 10 minutes into this thing. This is crazy. This is great. I'm really enjoying this match so far. Dude, the Colossus count is nuts. Does he not know there are this many Colossus? He's got four Vikings now, and he's pumping Vikings two at a time. So he knows. He sniffed it out. He scanned it, or he scouted it. It's probably a scan, and there's a scan to see all the Colossus in their full glory here. Good EMP. That's why the ghosts are here. EMPs against Protoss. Snipes against Zerg. Those are the big spells ghosts are very good at in both of these matchups. Mar Again, neither player willing to super commit here. The Terran partially because he's going to get caught by a Disruptor shot if he does. And the Protoss because Anti-Armor Missile will greatly reduce... Oh, good snipe on that Warp Prism. Will greatly reduce their effectiveness. All right, man. It's disruptors. It's Colossus. It's Phoenix. It's Zealots. It's Upgrades. Working on that plus two just like Maru is. Fifth base coming in. Hero said, I will attack while I expand. It's a basic concept. But by golly, it is honestly one of the things that will get you promoted in StarCraft. One of the biggest things that will get you promoted in StarCraft is expanding while you're attacking someone. And it's just a lot. It's just a lot of mental... No, we killed a ghost with those? I thought those elves would get nothing done. It's just a lot of mental energy to remember, like, okay, I'm on the other side of the map. I'm posturing. I need to watch my army closely because if I don't, they'll die, right? But also, go back home and tell your workers to make a new base. It's like, ah, it's too much. It's too much for a lot of StarCraft players. It's something I still massively struggle with. So I hear you. Widow Mine doesn't get a shot off. Zealots. They just, they're Zerglings now, right? They didn't used to be Zerglings, but now they have the ability to dart in and largely dart out against anything that the Terran can do. Like, Terrans are like, we know how to deal with fast, quick, harassing units. We know how to deal with Zerglings. You're not that different. Marohan is that group, adeptly and expertly. Working on a Tempest. Tempest production here from Hero. Mm, fusion Core, maybe for battle. We might see some battle cruisers in this game. Entirely possible. Plus two air weapons getting researched. It's going to be liberators, and it's probably going to be advanced ballistics. Might not be battle cruisers. Much to the chagrin of all the battle cruiser fans who watched these casts of mine and love the BC. And Morrow's up 199 to 165 supply. His macro's been crazy good, but shield battery overcharge is amazing. And the Colossus count is pretty good here too. Cannon count is nice. Morrow attacking into this, I would not recommend it, and he thinks that too. He's like, you know what? Uh -huh. Too many cannons, too many shield batteries. The army of Hero is here. Attacking into a defended fortified base is just rough. You just don't do it, especially as a Zerg player. Never attack into an enemy base that has an army sitting on it. Attack one when the army's over here, right? Then move in and take it down. Never, ever attack into a base that a Protoss army or a Terran army is sitting at. That's something Maru is taking very seriously as well. Oracle just got totally sniped by that Widow Mine. Zealots are like, oh, planetary, you say. Well, we're getting some easy kills. Trying to kill oh, these missile turrets, but ah, the whole army of Maru's in the neighborhood. So we're going to try to kill this missile turret. Nice. Handful of harassing blink stalkers here because they can get away. And by that, I mean some of them can get away. Not all of them, but definitely some of them can get away. And they're flying through the... Oh, that one got tagged. Tagged and slowed, which means that's a death sentence. No! Blink came up. I always forget how... Short of a time it is for Blink to recharge. So that's SCV's dead. Cool, so denying that base. These stalkers just kind of lucked into that, right? They didn't intend to find this base here, but hey, if it was here, great. Hero taking a base in the bottom left that is not getting paused in its construction at all. So ahead, also expanding on the right side. This is a reason Hero and Maru are both, were both in the GSL Season 2 Finals, is this. This right here. They're both incredible macro gods. It's 14 minutes, right? It's 14 minutes into this game, and they're both effectively maxed out. I mean, okay, Hero's at 175 supply. 
but has enough money to max out if he wanted to, but he doesn't. He's spending his money on resources and expanding, resources, upgrades and expanding and stuff. And then he's gonna throw in some High Templar. Yeah, see, he's easily up into the maxed out range. Here are 14 minutes with incredible upgrades and a huge base count. This is it. Like, this is how they win games. Sure, a lot of it's decision-making and ability to do well in an engagement, but a massive part of it you can't skip out on is having a massive army at 15 minutes and a million bases. This base dies. Hero overextended on this one for sure. Like, oh, we'll double expand. No, says Maro. That is a little bit too overeager for you. I'm going to punish you on that one. Uh, we get nukes. Yes, we're getting the nukes. The nukes. The nukes. The, the nukes are on fire. I'm trying to figure out how to title this video. Because I want I want the people who don't watch GSL to know these are the GSL finalists. But I don't want it to make it sound like I'm casting a GSL replay. Because that's not what this is. This is from Valencia. Oh, Maru marching in. is going to do some serious damage to the natural base of our Protoss player. A couple probes go down. Takes down a Robo. Oh, there's no way this nuke happens. There's no way. Okay, yeah. No, it's just not. It was gutsy. I liked it. I liked going for it. If you get it, you probably win the game. So, I mean, high risk, high reward, right? Actually, lower risk, high reward. I don't know. Morrow splitting up his army into two separate groups like this is just genius. He's just in there. He's in there. He's absolutely doing incredible work. Yeah. I'm sure some zealots come in to try to deal with their buying time for the rest of the army from here to show up. Hero's army is kind of slow. Tempests are used for battle cruisers if they show up, but they're pretty good against, you know, liberators and vikings, too. Good. Yeah, EMP doesn't actually catch. Oh, that's a better EMP, I think. That Archon still has a ton of shields, though. And Maru getting chased all the way home, or at least half of his army. The other half of his army is over here. And if I were them, man, do you need them? He just, oh, he hallucinated Colossus. That can't be an accident. We never see accidental hallucinations, do we? Ah, medevac gets sniped down. Oh, the Vikings getting stormed and hit in the face as they try to take down these Tempests, which are something of a problem here. All right, marching in. Ah, beautiful storms are up too. The storms are such an important part here. If you're not getting some kind of splash damage against the Marines and Marauders and stuff, you're going to have an impossible time. But if you have more than one kind of splash damage, you're going to have a much easier time. Colossus and the Storm and the Archons are very good too. Coming up this ramp is so dicey. I really don't like this from Hero. But somehow Maru's backing out. Maybe it's a trap. He's splitting up left and right. He's like, I will concave you. Your Colossus are not very good if they're being attacked on two sides at once, are they? Defensive nuke set up. We have time to kill this orbital. Yes, says Hero. Yes, we do. And once again, Maru tries to set the trap. He's, is he gonna let the, he's gonna let the nuke land just for the viewers like you. Woohoo! Pretty, pretty, pretty stuff there. Uh, Maru, just, that's it. He's like, hey, come in here. Let me spring this trap. I'm really shocked that Hero hasn't killed these rocks. He's been here forever. Okay, it doesn't matter now. He's at the top of this ramp. He's posturing. Maru's maxed out. He's got enough money to do a pretty decent job of remaxing. What is he doing? He's trying to, this is a trap he's springing. He's trying to, yeah, he's trying to be like, if you engage here, I'm not going to let you leave. Ah, the surround. There it is. There it is. The Colossus are not able to attack one side at the same time. They have to split their attacks between multiple sides here, which makes them worse. The Disruptors can't send in one direction either. Reinforcing Zealots charge out of nowhere to try to help with his engagement, but all that's left is a few Tempests. There from Hero, he just went from a 200 supply to 119 supply. Resources lost are 27,000 to 18,000. Maru sprang that trap expertly. I really don't know what Hero was trying to do there. Why would you go up a ramp in that position against a maxed out Maru? He was just waiting for you to do that, and Maru just fell into it. Maru, or rather, Hero fell into it. Maru expands in the top right during all of that chaos, and he's making. Oh, okay, Hero's making carriers now. He's like, you don't have a lot of Marines. 14 Marines and 3 Vikings, and some Ghosts, which are pretty good against Interceptors. Not as good against the carrier bodies themselves, though. I'm trying to expand over here again as Hero at the 3 o'clock and force the cancel because Maro just wanders in at the absolute, absolute worst time. Disruptor hits. There haven't been very many of those today. Which, you know, if you're a Terran, not... Oh, guys, snipe on that Disruptor. Another one goes down. There's not a lot of army here for Maru. Not a big, huge swell of it, but does he have enough? 
certainly looks like he's got it up. The Disruptors. Oh, that's your GG. 96 to 37 total supply. Reinforcements cruising in. Tempest not going to handle this. Carrier not going to handle this. And Maru comes out on top in 19 minutes and 42 seconds. What a beautifully well-executed game there from Maru. I cannot expect more from a Terran player. Sure. Did he lose a couple of bases? Absolutely. Did he make up for it by retaking some bases in the top right? Yes. The trap that he sprung was excellent. He's like, hey, come on up. I'm not going to stop you. Come on up here, Maru says. Meanwhile, he sneaks around down this ramp and around this way. And he's got some units here coming in and some here coming in and here coming in. And just 360 surrounds. I've not seen a Terran execute a 360 surround trap on a Protoss in a very long time. And Maru does it because he's Maru. Why else? Why else would he do it? Because he's Maru. That's why. Man, what an absolute boss this guy is. You know that. It's Maru. He's a multiple-time GSL champion. He's never won a world championship in WCS or ESL. But you know what? A lot of people consider GSL to be a higher level of competition than the official world champion of StarCraft II anyway. So I get it. I get it. Raynor is actually going to go compete in GSL for Season 3. So that's amazing. I'm excited for a world champion foreigner to come play in GSL and see what he can do. Either prove the haters wrong or right about foreigners and about winning a championship that is, you know, it's a tournament that is so squished into a 24-hour period, right? You got a round of 16 in some of these premier tournaments and it's it's all in a row. You're going to play against four separate opponents just boop, 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 right after one and right after the other to get to the championship. So you don't have time to prepare for who you're playing against. In GSL, you do. And that's the difference that people make the argument about. Anyway, yeah, 34,000 resources lost for Hero and only 20 for Maru. That last battle was everything. That su surprise battle was everything. Maru was able to walk across the map. Hero trying to transition into some carrier stuff. wasn't Couldn't quite pull that off. Didn't have the time for it, obviously. And Maru, that's the thing about Terran, man. This is not like a maxed out army right here. Okay, this is a bunch of army for sure. But it's enough. That's the thing about Terran. If they have enough left over after the battle is over, they're just going to crush you. Beautiful. I mean, just abjectly beautiful, beautiful game. Well done. Well, well, well done by Maru. Can't ask, can't ask for more from this guy. So a Nexus went down and an Orbital Command went down. Otherwise, both players did a really good job protecting their own bases. All three Colossus died. All nine Tempest died. 20 ghosts went down. That's a lot more than I was expecting to see on this uh, this unit's lost tab. But, yep, Maru. This is why. This is why you clicked on this, Terran fans, is because it's Maru. Because he does stuff like this. And Hero played very well, too. Right? Like, again, Hero's playing super well. He made it to the finals of GSL. Anyway. <sighs> All right, good stuff. Really, really good stuff from both of these players, and that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.